What's two things that I, I'm like the best in? You make me the happiest and you can make me the maddest. Ditto. <laughs> I thought I didn't make you mad. You don't. The way that I feel like I've been a good husband is I make sure that I'm always trying to bring the greater, the greater out of her. I've learned to try to outdo him doing for me. Nobody can love my woman like I would love my woman. We're a bit dysfunctional, if you ask us. We put the fun in dysfunctional. In dysfunction. The way that I feel that I may not have been a good husband is the same answer to why I was a good husband. I push too hard sometimes. Sometimes I wasn't a good listener. You can't always, come on, come on, get it, you can do it, you can. Things that he was saying were maybe a good idea, and I'm thinking like, maybe. Sometimes I just need to stop and say, let's just relax. It's not that deep. I think that all of us have to go back and just look over our vows. I'm going to love you until death do us part. Not until you kill me, but until, like, natural death does its part. Yes. Okay. Th what? Man, where does it all begin? God, dog. Oh, you just made me go somewhere. Okay. So, imagine being a three-year-old, seeing your mom abused, not because of something she did um, something as simple as you didn't cook what I asked you to cook. And um, I can remember at three years old saying, nobody else will ever hit my mom again. I'm the youngest of 14, and I'm the only one that had a different father. As a young girl, I really wanted a father, but for him to never attempt to come see me, to see about me. I think the problem was rejection. A few years later, now I'm five or six, there's another incident where another guy is putting his hands on her. And as a five-year-old, I'm trying to fight a grown man. It became a cycle of always protecting, always protecting. What that did was turn me into a vicious little machine. I know people see today like this comedian, funny guy. But that turned me into a machine. I couldn't, I couldn't turn off. I got to be a teenager and my mom remarried and it was a shift. It became kind of hectic because this guy, he was mean and, and hateful. I could just hear him fussing at her through the walls. It's like my heart would just race. And all of a sudden, here we are dumpster diving. We were going like behind grocery stores into the dumpsters to get food. Why are we living like this? It made me start becoming mean to guys. Through my teenage years, I could see it coming. And once I flipped the switch, there was no turning it off. I literally tried to kill somebody for messing with my mom. I tried three times, but it didn't work. It didn't happen but it still mentally did something to me to where every male relationship that I had, I ruined deliberately. I always had a bite. I always had a, a lash out. I didn't trust men. I didn't care. You're not just going to say anything to me and get away with it. It didn't matter if you were 600 pounds or 60 pounds. And I had seen my sister and them take abuse, stab, and hit. My idea of dealing with it, Let's just fight. I'm not going to be with nobody who's going to just take me out and take me under. I'm not going out like that. 
coming in with the baggage that you came in with, the baggage that I came in with, and put it under one roof, eventually there's gonna be an explosion. I would wake up in the middle of the night, shaking, fighting, tormented, to the point to where my wife woke me up and she said, enough is enough, and we prayed. The Lord just spoke to me and said, there are some really good men out there that I, I'm gonna place in your life that are gonna help you get to your destiny, but you can't get there if you don't trust anybody. Going into my marriage, it, 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 it took a while for me to kind of let my guard down and for me to really learn that I could be loved, that I had someone that could protect me. One day, I'm sitting in a room about 150, 200 men doing a seminar, me speaking into men's lives, and I'm supposed to be talking about one thing, and the Lord just pumped the brakes on me and said, this is what I was telling you about. And I just started to weep. I, I told the guys, I said, I hated every guy in here. Not because of what you did to me, because of what you did to my mother. I stopped and just listened to what God was telling me. When I tell you that thing was broken off of me, when you feel true deliverance, it's like a weight. It's literally like a weight that's taken off of you that you can't, you, you just can't describe, you can't explain. And I think that day was the beginning of true healing for me. There's a lot of pride that had to be swallowed that got us here commitments that had to be made and then remade and then rededicated. We don't have a perfect marriage. It's a work in progress. But what we do have to give is hope. If we can make it through and God's grace can get us through, it can help anybody. That's true. We like two toes in a sock. We, we tight. tight. We never would have made it if it wasn't for our foundation and our faith in God. It's like when you hit that rewind button, it's like... It it's always leads back, back to, to Jesus. It leads to Jesus. So let's just put it in order. Jesus in us, kids and family, and everything else. Because if he's not at the top... He's our cover. Nothing else works. Yes. And one thing that I did for myself is I wrote down my vision that I wanted, you know, for my marriage. And I'll call David's name out that my eyes don't wander off for anything or anybody else that I, he keep that fire and, and desire for him to keep, you know, in our relationship. When you wrote your list down, did you write down tall, dark, and handsome? Well, it didn't matter if you was tall. And, and dark wasn't on there either, but. Handsome. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> We're supposed to be serious right now, sir. I'm serious. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he always makes me laugh. I'm Tamala Mann. And I'm David Mann. And we are second. <laughs>